Welcome back to Dragon Ball Z Anime Review Part 15. This one covering the second to last arc of the anime, The Kid Buu Saga, which covers episodes 276 to 287, covering chapters 508 to 516. Yep. Yeah, roughly a nine chapter arc in the manga, but yet the anime has dressed it out to 12 episodes. Which like really? If it was two if it was two chapters, you can easily get this arc done in less than about ten episodes with twelve. Well, there kind of is a reason for that, because the last episode a lot of it is just filler. Yeah, they they throw some filler stuff in here just because. This arc has the debut of roughly one new character. Yes, only one. It does bring back one other character. And Let's see, aside from the one new character, I'm trying to think, though, was there anything else new they introduced? No, not really. Though, they did bring back one particular character that I've seen quite some time in the series. Yeah, the series, this arc has the debut of Kid Buu himself. He shows up in epi at the end of episode one when Goku and Vegeta basically bas free Good Buu from basically being inside of Ibu. He's it, and they're able to get out of the evil boot, taking Piccolo and the boys outside. Everyone's like, we're back to normal, of course. They're unconscious, but they're alive. And then we see Ibu in agony. And he just basically goes like freaking nuts. And he turns like beefy size, and he just turns smaller. According to Supreme Kai, this is Majin Buu's original form. This is the normal form of Boo. Yes, and the re and basically Supreme Kai explains why Boo looks like why he looks so chub why he looks so fat. Yeah, there's a reason for that. He reveals that it was actually four other three a few other Kai besides himself. There was the East Kai, well actually West Kai, which was a a woman. Yes, a woman. Yeah. Describe this and definitely by appearance, a very beautiful woman. The Supreme Kai that is the Supreme Kai for this series, he was the East Kai. There was also North and South Kai, and there was a Kai above them, the Supreme Kai. Yeah. Basically, Kid Buu, created by Bibbidi, which we see him in the anime, and here's the thing, the guy never physically created the manga. We finally get a chance to see him, and he looks exactly like his son. Except the only difference is his cape is a little bigger, and he wears a black cap with his M, with his M symbol on it. Yeah, that's the only difference. And he first Majin Buu is his son. Like, I'm your father. That kind of is true. Yeah, it's been later revealed that Bobbity, the 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 wizard who got his own arc. Yeah, it turns out he's a duplicate of Bibbity. Yeah. So all creating havoc across the universe. Somehow they got the Supreme Kai world. Yeah, it's never actually explained of how Bibbity even knew where the heck this place even was. And the first person that Kid Boo went after was West Kai. Yep, went after her first. And kills her. Takes on North I think it takes on South uh, North Kai. Kills him pretty easily. Takes on South Kai and actually absorbs him. Yeah, first victim of his absorption technique. And then it's like, okay, there's like two Kai's left. There is the East Kai and there is the East Kai. And of course, she takes an East Kai, looking up the 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 higher up that I can't think his name is. Yeah, he fights Boo, and then he absorbs him, and and takes on his appearance. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, this is later also expanded upon in the current Dragon Ball Super manga, where the Galactic Patrol took Maj and Boo because he had the essence of the the head the the original Supreme Kai. And at one point, he does speak through Boo. Yeah, he's actually alive inside. He's basically the reason why the good that we have the good boo, and that's the reason why for his appearance and why he has a fetish for eating sweets, which apparently Ibu picked up for some reason. Yeah, and then they pretty much continue. Uh, while basically Supreme Kai is explaining this, while this is like, and then basically Kid Buu, first thing he does is that he destroys the Earth. He figures though. Ah, I don't care. Yeah, according to Supreme Kai, 
This guy has got no remorse. He is basically just a mindless killing machine. Yep, that's what this kid Boo is. And so Goku grabs Vegeta, and instead of, instead of going like, of course, I'm like, well, wait, why does he grab his, uh, why do he grab the boys and Piccolo? Nope, he skips over them, grabs Dende and Mr. Satan. Good thing he grabbed these two because Dende has controlled the Dragon Balls, and Mr. Satan is, of course, this, and of course, this unintentionally is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And they get transported to, to the to the planet. And then we have Kid Boo going around the universe, wrecking planets, and somehow he ends up on the Grand Guy's planet. Yes. Somehow he gets here. Like, how the heck can you get to other world? This is basically on the other side of existence. This is basically just a place not even regular mortals can get to. He fights the returning Pycon. Yeah, I kind of forgot about this. Like, wow. I mean, despite the fact we have the Grand Kai planet, no Grand Kai. I'm like, really? Yeah, there's no explanation of why Grand Kai is not here. Yeah, he's not even meant... He, the, the guy himself is not even seen or even... Uh, like, they refer to us as the Grand Kai planet, but Grand Kai himself? Nope, doesn't make a physical appearance. We do see West Kai. Yep, the, well, the lower Kais. Yeah. He pops up, and you see a couple... He's worth seeing because Pycon is there. And when he and of course Krillin, apparently Krillin and Yamcha, after they die, apparently King Kai asks King Yama, "Hey, can you have these two retain their bodies? I would like to train with them." He's like, like, "Sure, whatever." And well, they start training at the Grand Kai plant. Now Krillin, this is the first time he's actually been here because the guy has died twice over the course of the series, and he's never he's never trained with King Kai before. Yamcha has, so at least he has some experience. And he decided to put on his old gear again. Despite that, when he died, he, wore, he was wearing completely different clothing. Yeah, even when he was... Well, good to that, basically. He goes back to their clothing for some reason. I don't know why. So. Yeah. And then, basically, Goku and Vegeta just basically sort of lure him in to the Supreme High Plane so he can stop wrecking the heroes looking for them. And they begin to fight, and they brawl for quite some time. It takes, like, several episodes, like, about half of the arc realizes, that, hey, we need to figure out a way to beat him. Of course, Vegeta realizes though, how strong Majibu is, and, and basically agrees Goku should be the one to beat him. And figure, okay. And, of course, Dende, Supreme Kai, and Old Kai transform to the off-world. And then, of course, Vegeta, and, and, and at one point, like, Vegeta gets his idea after he sees something miraculously happen. Yeah, Good Boo returns. Yep, and he gets to fight with evil, the the evil Kid Boo, and he does well for a little while. Of course, Mister Saiyan does help him. Yeah, he does help him, which is surprising. Yeah, he actually helps him bend off evil Kid Boo. He does help a little bit. At one point, Missing actually bites Kid Boo's antenna. Oh, I forgot to mention. Vegito did bite his antenna because I kind of thought that Goku bit that, but no, it was actually Vegito. Yeah, but when he bit when it was Kid Buu, he felt nothing. Yeah, when Goku bites Freeze's tail, it actually hurts him, and kind of the same thing with Goku bites Whis's hand, it actually hurts him. Not in the case of Mr. Satan biting the antenna of Kid Buu, does nothing to him. Yeah, and then after Kid Buu was like, okay, he contacts Dende, has to go dynamic quickly. Some of the, of course, they have a brief chat with the el, el, the elder, and he, Mori, and he agrees to give him the Dragon Balls. They summon Purunga. First thing he does, restore the planet Earth. Good. Next, restore the population. He's like, that's a difficult wish, but I can do it. It takes him quite some time. Eventually, yeah. Everybody's back. Even Okai's even Okai and Vegeta returned to life. Yeah, I'm like, wow. And of course the deal was basically bring back everybody who died recently with the exception of the most evil ones. Like, okay. And like everybody brought back. Now in the case of Piccolo and the boys, they pretty much were brought back exactly where they died. Oh yeah, they mentioned they had Halos. Despite the fact we never saw them with Halos. At all. I'm like, really? We all in here dealing with Halls we didn't see with Halos? 18 and Marin, or even Ox King and Roshi. Yeah, never saw those people with halos. Just, well, aside from Krillin and Yamcha, just 
Bulma, Chi Chi, and Videl. And of course, the boar is there in the afterlife, basically, because he was evil. It's like, maybe next time. Nope, he never appears in the series ever again. And while the fight's going on, we also see something from the from the from the world of hell, which I have heard Toriyama has been called out about this. He's like, "What are you talking about?" He apparently is like, "What? What? Yeah, apparently the villains have to keep their bodies in hell. Yeah, this is like almost every single dead villain who appeared in DBZ, not Dragon Ball, DBZ. Yeah, you see Doctor Jiro." We see Cell, we see Frieza, we see most of the Ganyu forms, we have Captain Ganyu. We see Bobbity here. Yes, Bobbity. And yet, we don't see any of the villains from Dragon Ball here. Just the villains from DBZ. My only guess is the reason why... The, there was a couple of reasons I've heard the reason why this scene existed. Um, mainly because the, the... Well, because the anime was about to end really soon. So why not have a quick shot of the villains in hell watching the final final major fight of the series? Because a, even though there's an arc that comes right after this, which really arc was really, really was necessary. Yeah, of course, B B Bobbity was, yeah, he trained Majiru. No, he did it. That was his father. That was Bibbity. <laughs> yeah, and of course, he privately cheered for Goku. Yep. And of course, Frieza does not have his cybernetic look. He's basically his regular final look. Yeah, th there's no explanation in the anime of why in the afterlife he has this look, and yet next time you see him in Super... He's got the cybernetic look for some reason when he's in Earth's Hell. Also, Earth's Hell looks completely different in Super. Like, in Dragon Ball Z, it's this sort of, like, hellish landscape. And in Super, it's like, it looks like heaven. It's like, what? It's like people, the people who made Super apparently didn't know, know what hell was supposed to look like in Super, so they changed it. Yep. And whatever was thrown back to life. Vegeta, con of course, Vegeta has trying to get Supreme Kai to contact her. He's usually, he doesn't know plan to tele tele telepathy. And King Kai is absent. Like, hey, I can do it. And of course, open the channel. And Vegeta basically explains what's going on. And actually gives her energy. Mostly put, first we have Gohan's group. And then we have Boma and Go uh, Krillin's group. And that's it for the moment. And he, of course, he yells at him. And, of course, everyone thinks he's like a demon, or of course, dealing with his soul. Yeah, and then Goku steps in. We get a little bit bigger, and we see briefly Android 8. Yeah, he makes an appearance, along with Sano. Yeah, where she's older now. She looks like she's probably, I'd say, she's probably in her 20s, I'd say. Yeah, it's something you'll see return to this character. I mean, these two, it's shocking. We well, see a brief cam by launch. Yes, Launch makes her first appearance in this series since... Uh, I think the last time she appeared in this series was the Vegeta Saga. Yeah, that was the last time we saw her. Apparently she's aged a bit. Like, I would probably say she's probably... And this is my personal guess. She's probably just over the age of 30. I would not say she's 40. No, I don't think so. And let's see, what else? Hmm... Yes, and then basically the reason why everyone works on energy because Vegeta has a plan. Goku to summon the v the spirit bomb for the third and last time in the series. Like, I guess that even Toriyama felt okay. We gotta do use the spirit bomb one more time in the series. Despite the fact the last time he used it, he used it on Frieza, which did hurt him, didn't kill him, but it did hurt him. And thanks to Mr. Satan being there, of course, he chastises people for not giving their energy to help help Goku. Of course, he doesn't say Goku while he takes on evil Kid Buu. And he does convince them to basically give all their energy. And Goku's like, already, and basically, the, the spirit bomb is the size of a freaking moon. Yes. And Kid, Kid evil, Good Buu decides to briefly battle him. And, of course, gets Vegeta away. Of course, tells Mr. Satan. Of course, Mr. Satan basically walks to him. And, of course, he just smack him. But, basically, he doesn't give a good reason. Like, get Vegeta. Move. Move Vegeta. And, he gets the move. And, look how Kid Buu, Good Boo gets out of the way. He, he's off a distance. And, eventually, like, Goku throws it. But, he doesn't have enough energy. And, then, like, Vegeta's like, Oh, wait. We have one more wish. Dende. Ask to restore Goku's strength. He's like, sure. 
and he asks Purunga to restore Goku's strength. And strength is restored. And he goes straight to Super Saiyan 1. And then he uses to, to, and he basically pushes the spirit bomb ball one handed and completely vaporizes Majin Buu. And the one thing I did notice though is that the way Buu was killed, it looks like the same way that Cell was killed. Yes, it's like the same exact style of animation they used to, to when they killed Cell, they used to, they used to kill Kid Buu. And he's like, I hope he come back one day as a as a good person. Yep, and then we see that kid. We see everybody's like, and of course Dende and the Kai's basically transport back to the to the Kai home planet, and he does. Dende tries to heal Goku first, and Goku's like, no, wait, heal Vegeta first. He's basically has a lot. Of, he he got a Tarbian. Of course, he heals them, and he heals Goku. And we see that Good Boo is alive, and Mr. Saiyan says that he'll take him to live with him. And, and of course, Vegeta basically, where he wants to come, was like, fine. And we go, okay, we'll, we'll make a wish that Dragon Ball wait six months, keep him alive for six months, and have the Dragon Ball erase, the uh, Dragon Balls erase the everybody's memory of Majin Buu. <laughs> well, probably except, everybody except for the closest people associated with Goku. Heck, even 17, yeah, I forgot, almost forgot to mention, 17 makes his return. In his brief cameo, yes, Seventeen is one of the people who give energies to Goku. Of course, after this, no, Eighteen does not show up again in the series until the build-up to the Universal Survival Tournament. That's the next time we see him. He is gone for quite some time. I would say he's probably gone for, oh, I'd say almost two years after this in story. Because by the time they get to when the Freezer shows up, it's been like a year since this event happened. And yeah, I guess they ever. Of course, they agree to take back back to Earth, and they tell. First, they have Gohan and the boys and Piccolo go back to everybody in the lookout, and Videl basically has a very tearful reunion with Gohan, and I'm like, uh, you could tell each other you're in love. You love each other, but nope. They don't mention it at all. And, of course, Chi-Chi's happy to see her sons. And then, of course, we have, well, Trunks and Goten reunite with their mothers. And, of course, Trunks, of course, is embarrassed to have his mothers hug him. Goten has no problem with it at all. And then, of course, after every Kid Buu is defeated, of course, everybody gets transported to Earth. And the way, this, the way this scene is shot is, like, so weird. It's like, despite the fact that we have Dende, Goku, Vegeta, Mr. Satan... B, that's the dog, he apparently came with Mr. Satan, and Maj Buu all came at the same time, apparently look like the kind of like different group. Like first to come out is just Gohan, Goku, Vegeta, and Dende, and of course Trunks basically is so happy to see his dad, and Chi Chi basically runs up to Goku, Goku actually tells Chi Chi he does love her. Everyone's like so happy to see him, of course, Videl reunites Mr. Satan, and... Then see Majin Buu, I was like so scared, like, don't worry, he's good, boo. And then six months pass by. And then they basically have the wish. And everybody's completely forgotten about Majin Buu. So, he just wanders in the street. He wants ice cream, but he has no money. He just wants to start a fight, so he somehow just randomly come across, basically, a street fighter. By the way, not the first time they had this since there's heck, even Goku was like one of these guys. And... He just basically ha defeats him in one punch, gets the money, he buys a bunch of ice cream. He's like, too much money. He says, keep the change. Well, it's probably good for his, probably good for the ice cream business, basically, that he got a lot of money and probably got a raise in his paycheck. <laughs> he eats all the ice cream, no problem. And then Boma just happens to be walking by because apparently Vegeta flew off someplace. And it looked like, though, that her bag basically being picked up by... Boo, but it's never seen. And then go shopping for jewelry because, well, Boma is a socialite. So, of course, she would. She's, she's a rich woman. Of course, she would buy lots of jewelry. And, of course, Boo thinks it's candy. And then two robbers show up and Boo recognizes them. Yeah, as the fighter and the promoter, basically, he defeated. Yeah. And then go, G Gohan and Videl show up as 
this great Saiyan man and great Saiyan woman. And of course, does their pose. And then the guys around is like, hey, we surrender because Majuru. And of course, they, of course, they jump over legs like, what? Okay. And then we cut straight to Goku's house. Where everybody just celebrating. And of course, Goku, Trunks, and Goten are just basically playing in the hot tub. Yes, a hot tub. And at one point, these two decide to jump out and just fuse naked. Yes, naked. And Goku, who's already naked, and of course they find, of course they blow up the tub, and everybody's like jumping out the tub, like what? And it's like you better stay like that so Chi Chi can spank you once. <laughs> yep. And then Chi Chi chases them because they're because they're naked, and 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 the episode ends with. Vegeta is saying, what are you looking at? <laughs> and that's how the episode ends. And that's the end of the arc. Now, the Peace World Saga takes place about 10 years after this. Because, like, you're probably thinking, okay, what happened during the time between this and Peace World? Well, only about a few things have been confirmed. We have the Dragon Ball Super Anime, which picks up exactly where this arc left off. The Dragon Ball Super Broly film, Super Dragon Ball Heroes... The Yo Goku, Son, Yo Son Goku and Friends Return. Yeah, I know that one's canon or not, but that's the one I can think of that takes place during time skip. And that's it. Just four things. I haven't finished watching Super Dragon Ball Heroes, but I plan to finish watching it soon. I basically was like partway through the second arc of the series. Of course, they're on different arc right now. Yep. But all in all, the Kid Buu saga was actually pretty good for Saga. But I feel like, though, if you watch it, it feels like it takes some time. And it goes by pretty quickly, too. And it's a pretty short saga. Yeah, it's the first 12-episode saga since Imperfect, since the Perfect Cell saga. Now, the final saga of the series is the last... It, not only is the last saga of the series, also the shortest. At four episodes. And that's it. Yep, that's it. Also, it was revealed that Gohan and Fidel got married after the Vidi Majapu. Yeah, for some reason, they don't show the wedding. That would have been nice. I mean, they show the wedding of Goku and Chi Chi, but not Gohan and Fidel. I mean, heck, they even show the weddings of Crow and 18 or even Vegeta and Boma. It's just, oh, yeah, they got married during a time skip. Don't bother to show the wedding. Now, in the case of Boma and Chi Chi, yeah, it would be implied they kept that secret, but in the case of. Crow in 18, I would think that would be a really interesting wedding to watch on screen. <laughs> but, nope, we won't see it at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, that's it for the Kid Boo Saga. Now, I got one more video left, and then I will be done with Dragon Ball Z. Of course, I will occasionally come back to the series to talk about the movies and specials for the series. And in case you're wondering how many movies there are for Dragon Ball Z, there are 13 movies. Plus, I think, about... If I remember, I think it's about four specials. You have the Bardock special, Future Trunks, Yo Son Goku and Friends Return, the the Planet Rick and Super Saiyan, Saiyans, and I think there's over about five specials. So I'll probably, I'll probably review those probably in the future. But once I finish up my the Peace World Saga, I am going to talk about basically the series going to have to replace this one to go along with whatever other series I'm working on. Yes, yeah, so I'm working on Claymore right after I finish with this one, but... There will be another series that takes place, like a long-running one, but I'll reveal that when I, just, when I get to Peace World, okay? So yeah, that's it for the video. My next video will be a comic corner, but I also expect three manga reviews today for Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia, and One Piece, okay? See you next video. Bye.